everyone. My name is Nick Hess, and as I said, I'm the staff technical lead of Peloton's web platform team. I came here to talk to, about Peloton's path from client-side rendering to static site generation, and finally to incremental static regeneration using Next.js. We at Peloton have been using the Next.js as our React framework of choice for the last four years. In our pre-Next.js era, we were maintaining a large mono repo of single page applications and corrected, ejected create React, create React apps. And of course, this wasn't without its challenges. As our company was growing, our needs were evolving as well. We needed to come up with a new solution that would allow our content teams to operate more independently from engineering, as well as address our site performance. And we were also looking for a solution to improve our SEO and stop paying for our pre-rendering service. And we knew that Next.js was the ideal solution in the, in the direction we wanted to go in. It offered support for internationalization, out-of-the-box optimizations, a better developer experience, and would offer the ability to keep up with the newest features of the React ecosystem. Now, we knew that the eventual goal for our code base was to migrate all of our applications over to Next, but we needed to decide which app to start with. And the clear choice was our primary entry point application that houses most of our customer facing pages, and specifically the home page, as you can see up there. Migrating this app first would showcase the great improvements that migrating to Next could bring, and we could bring that to the other apps and other pages that we wanted to migrate. In doing this, though, we had some key objectives that were crucial to how we would ultimately define success in this transition. There are two, there are, oops, next slide. We needed to ensure that we were reducing the amount of risk of breaking pages, not hindering other product development, and we needed to change the content strategy to use that page builder with pre-rendering that I was talking about so that we could fetch data for pages at build time. And on top of all that, we also had a big decision to make that would impact all of the above. What was the best method to migrate our first app? So we used two methods for migrating to Next.js in our monorepo, incremental migration and all-at-once migration. For our purposes, we select the best method based upon the application that we're going to be migrating. So thinking about this, is kind of like you're doing a large renovation in your house, and you need to decide if the, if the renovation is going to be too disruptive for your day-to-day -to, -day to even continue living in the house while the renovation is happening. So we made the decision to start with the incremental migration on our first app and use an all-at-once migration approach for other apps that were not looking for immediate SEO gains or pre-rendering. Now, the benefits of starting with an incremental migration approach for our first app was that it would allow us to pay down our tech debt on our tightly coupled and growing monolithic application, reduce risk to any product launches by keeping our existing single-page app untouched as a fallback in case there were any issues, and allow us to migrate to the, to the new page filter content strategy. And it would also create greater internal alignment of our ideal web architecture and support our learning so that when we wanted to migrate other apps, we would have a better sense of what that would involve, because we have several apps in our monorepo. And along this the same vein, starting a new app would allow us to create a playbook of sorts for other teams to use Next.js in the future. Now let's get into how exactly we did both incremental and all-at-once migration in Peloton and how you can apply these strategies. We'll start with incremental. Let's say we have an app in our mono repo called Web. Our first step is to create a new app alongside that that we can call NextWeb. And we're going to set that up with our first page and all of our packages and get that running, and we get it deployed. Now how do we set up a method of linking the two applications? We want them to deploy and always be connected. So our primary domain will become designated to next web, and we will use something called fallback rewrites to proxy any requests for pages that have not been migrated to web to next web. So the code in your next config for fallback rewrites will look something like this. Basically, if there's any page that Next.js find that it does not find, instead of just serving a 404, it will send the request over to our destination. But an additional point to consider is that now that we have two versions of our web app deploying to separate sites, how do we keep the commit SHA of our deployments linked together? What if we need to roll back a deployment? We don't want to go in and roll back two separate sites 
one for web, one for next web, because we have this hard-coded URL. We want each deployment of next web to always be proxied to the matching deployment of web. So we can achieve this by assigning an alias to our web deployment that is a unique prefix that is used in the fallback rewrite of our next web deployment. This way, if we need to roll back at any point, we only need to roll back next web, and every de deployment will always have that unique one. And once we've migrated our home page index route first, we continue to bring over other pages over the next web, and they will be available right away without needing to deprecate the same route in the web app until we're comfortable with the completed page migration. Now let's talk about the all at once migration. An all at once migration is a bit more straightforward, and the Next.js docs cover this pretty well. But this method is great if you want to get an app onto Next as quickly as possible, and then can migrate routes over at a later period, and other teams can help out with that. But the downside of this method is that you're not realizing the gains of Next right away, such as automatic code splitting, streaming server side rendering, you know, experimental partial pre rendering and server components until you migrate your first page to use that Next.js runtime. If we are migrating one of our single page apps, we set up our next config within our existing app, we're gonna have it export. And then we create our root layout page and then our app entry point page. The app entry point page will be using the Next.js dynamic import and setting pre-rendering to false. Now since client components, as you can see from the use client there, can still be pre-rendered on the server and if you have any code imported in your app that assumes the browser context, you know, that, that, that assumes that the window's available, the app's not gonna build. So once we've completed our first migration, we have our Next.js app set up to deploy as a static app, just like your existing single page app. But as I said, this is still a static site that will need to be migrated to using the Next.js runtime without export for deployment and have routes brought out of the React router. Now let's add another layer of complexity and touch on internationalization. Next.js is a great framework to use if you're like Peloton and use support in existing and growing internationalization. In the Pages router, we have the built-in IETN support, as you can see here, and in the app router, there are well-defined solutions for setting up international routing, whether your app is based upon multiple top-level domains or you just subpath routing. However, if you're using the all at once migration strategy to export a next app with static export, using this method means that an IETN routing setup like here is not gonna work until you are deploying using the next runtime. In our first migration, we had a lot of shared packages in our mono repo that assumed the browser context and a backlog of circular dependencies to fix so that we could actually use the next JS runtime. Thus, we needed to use the static export for our next web until we were able to complete the work to change the many packages in our mono repo. And these packages needed to change to check to see if the browser context was available instead of assuming it was. That's a nice example there. Now this created a complex deployment strategy that was not remedied until we were able to migrate to using the Next.js runtime. Basically, you have to build a static app for each one of your locales and route them together. It's a bit of a nightmare. As a result, I suggest that if you're running an international site or looking to launch your site in a new locale in the near future, prioritize migrating the packages in your code base to support handling if the window's not available. That way you can use either migration strategy and not have to export your next app as a static app. This will also get you closer to being able to start leveraging the best features of Next. So now that we have our first app migrated over to Next, we want to migrate another app, or maybe product has asked us to create a completely new app. So now let's dive into multi-zones. In Peloton's case, one of our teams was tasked to create an app that allowed potential new members to browse our entire catalog of classes. We wanted this app to live as onepeloton.com slash classes. Now at Peloton, we split up our domain to use a micro front end approach in order to keep apps separated by their team's domain, reduce their size, and allow them to deploy independently of each other. So we define a zone by setting the base path in the app's next config file, we see base path classes. And then we wanna, when we wanna route our requests over to the classes app, we create a rewrite in our main site 
for our next web app that will send the classes pages over to the classes app and any of its child pages over to that same app. Using zones in our mono repo allows us to have shared packages for our next app so that we can have our base next configuration shared between all of them. Today, we have nearly all of our apps in the mono repo using Next.js and has empowered our engineering teams to build incredible websites and provide a path to a streamlined architecture. The Next.js app we built for that classes page site is a great example of what we've been able to accomplish with the framework. The team that developed it was able to build off of our initial learnings in our first Next migration to develop a site managed by ISR that hosts hundreds of thousands of pages across each one of our supported locales. Now, without ISR, we wouldn't be able to serve the 250,000 pages without a build that took one to two days. And because we're using ISR, the content teams are able to revalidate content without redeployments and busting the cache of all the other pages. So we now have a performant and SEO-optimized product for prospective members to browse all of the amazing Peloton classes. So I hope this was helpful and showcase the potential and possibilities of le leveraging Next.js for your organization and the efforts of migrating to Next and creating new apps with, that the framework could not have been done without the incredible talent and efforts of Peloton's e-commerce engineering team. Because as we say at Peloton, together we go far. Thank you.